thanks Kyle and thank you all for being here and for everybody that, that's watching online. Um, before we get into this, you know, obviously there's a lot of uh, chatter and, and speculation, etc., out there on social media, uh, which obviously we have no control over some of the things that are out there. You know, what I would ask today, uh, I think Kurt Brown made himself available yesterday to, to talk about that, and then I did as well uh, after he finished up, and, and we don't have anything to add to what either one of us said yesterday, and we really prefer to make this about the bowl, you know, the, the Boca Raton Bowl, which we're, we're thrilled to be a part of. Uh, you know, I think for our, our program to now be in a bowl three straight years and really do what, what has been achieved the last two years is, is really beyond remarkable. You know, we talk about the fact that we've had a football program for 97 years and only one other time had we won back-to-back -back conference championships. Uh, and in no other time had we ever had back-to-back 10-win -back seasons to, to be there now. Uh, is is just a truly phenomenal achievement, and I give I give Jeff uh, all the credit in the world, you know, with his staff and our players for, for their commitment, how focused they've been all season long. That has obviously put us in a terrific spot. I'd be happy to take any questions you have. Well, Boca was really the one that we hit keyed on because I think it's very similar to what we did last year with Miami in terms of the location, the date, you know, the exposure for this one's actually even better. I mean, we were the only college football game last year, but it was an afternoon game, whereas this year we're literally the only football game. There's one college and one pro football game on Tuesday the 20th, and that's our game with Memphis that's on prime time on ESPN. So the exposure for the program will be great. And I know everybody that's there players, our coaches, our fans, our media, you know, we'll all have a, a great time. Jeff, getting back to Florida, where a lot of the players are from, Schedule, uh, and we improved. And uh, the way we played the last 
so many weeks has really been outstanding. And uh, our guys are playing at a high level. They're executing, they're scoring points, they're flying around making plays. Uh, and I couldn't be prouder of the way we're playing at this point. Well, we've got a great group of guys that uh, all play with the chip on their shoulder. They all think they've been overlooked to a certain degree. They're out to prove themselves, and we try to provide them as coaches the best opportunity to prove themselves. And it's a lot of fun as coaches to try to put them in position uh, to win, to help them uh, achieve success looking on the field, to have fun doing it. Our players love competing and, and playing the game, and they love winning. Uh, there's a competitive uh, aspect to our guys that uh, is contagious. They compete every day in practice. Uh, they work hard, and when they get to go out there on game day, they're 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 in their element. And um, it's been fun to watch them grow. Uh, we definitely have numerous guys that have stepped up and played very very well this year. Yeah, I had the ball before Christmas. I know that was a big priority for you guys. What, what, what makes that an important fan Well, you know, the first bowl we ever went to, as you all know, was in Detroit, and that was on December 26th, and then. The second one we went to was in the Bahamas on December 24th, and, and both of those were, were great for their own reasons, but because of the, the closeness to Christmas and certainly with the Bahamas adding the passport issue, it made it a challenge for, for everybody to be there that wanted to be there. So you know, the fact that we were able to go to Miami last year, uh, I think that's the best we've represented at any bowl game, and we're hopeful the same will happen this year. You know, that won't always be an option. I mean, we won't always be able to go where we want to go, but as a conference champion each, each of the last two years, we've been able to choose that. So really, we, we do that uh, for our fans. I mean, our fans have indicated the desire to, uh, after the, the Bahamas Bowl, to, to do what we could to make it a little more fan-friendly, so to speak, and, and fortunately now, for the second straight year, we've done that. And I, I hope our, our fans represent, because like Jeff said, I think this team is a, a special team, and they deserve it, and really, some historical things out there. I mean, not just you know, all-time Western Kentucky history, but all-time college football history. You know what what some of the guys on this team have achieved, and, and I hope that we can uh, we can take the Hilltopper Nation South and send this group out the way they deserve to go out. Jeff, I, I had one, and I apologize because I don't want to exhaust your voice. Um, every coach I've ever dealt with says they learn something every year about their sport they coach, whether it's football or something else, and. You've now coached several years. Through 13 games with this team, what have you learned as a coach? Well, I think as a, as a coach, you grow each and every year. Uh, but, you know, the thing I like about our team, our players, our coaches, is we really uh, preach the competitive aspect. We preach the, the part of playing hard, playing tough, playing smart. Uh, and even though you get into X's and O's and try to put them in the best position to win, Come game time, you got to keep it simple for them. And we keep the same mantra each and every game. We try to make sure we do three things better than the other team, which is play hard, play tough, and play smart. Uh, and I tell them all the time, if guys, if fans notice you doing that, uh, you're going to have a chance to win. And you've got to make sure they notice who's the tougher team and who plays the hardest and who's the smartest. And it's not always perfect, but you know this group we have, they compete. Uh, every day they, they, they practice hard, they play hard, they want to win. Uh, and when you got a bunch of guys that do all those things and they want to win, uh, you have a, a good chance of having success. Todd, I had one for you. Um, you're around this team a lot. You, you, you would go to a lot of practices. Obviously, you talk with Jeff regularly. Just as a director of athletics, this team truly got better collectively from your vantage point. I know championships are always great, but the way they achieved it by getting better, just how exciting was that for you to see from, from your perspective? It was great, you know, and I was thrilled for those guys because if you think about it, I mean, what a tough act to follow from last year. I mean, you, you talk about a team that went 12 and 2, won a conference championship, finished in the top 25. That's a hard act to follow for anybody in America. And so for that really to be where the program was when this season started, and then for us to start three and three. You know, I think most teams would have probably not responded very well, but that to me speaks volumes about the character, the dedication, the discipline, the persistence of our players and our coaching staff to go from the act that they had to follow from being three and three this year and now to run off seven straight wins, the vast majority of them in completely dominating fashion. 
and, and in doing so, you know, despite having such a tough act to follow last year and the bar, I really believe last year being at an all-time high level for our football program, I think it's even higher now because of the fact that we had won another conference championship and then made history by winning 10 games for the second straight year. So they have truly, despite the, the challenges they faced, to me, elevated the program even higher than it was a year ago. And when you start practice? <clears throat> well, the tentative schedule, we wanted to wait to see exactly what bowl we're going to, but uh, our coaches will be out on the road recruiting this week. We kind of did not get to do that last week to, uh, due to our championship game, uh, which is, is fine because the championship game means a lot uh, to the recruits we're, we're on. Uh, but uh, we'll be out on the road recruiting. Our, our players will finish their finals and uh, have some light workouts in the weight room. And normally Friday uh, and Saturday we'll practice, uh, take Sunday off, come back and go Monday through Thursday. I'm not for sure. We may leave Friday for the bowl game. Jeff, when I was down to cover your game at Florida Atlantic, I go in the press box and there's a big picture of Howard Schnellenberger in the locker room. And, you know, I, I know you've been asked many times about the impact he's had on your career, but the fact that you get to play your biggest game of the season now at the home stadium with someone who I know means a lot to you. What, to, what does that mean? Well, I think without question, he's a Hall of Fame coach, and I was fortunate enough to play for him and then even work for him briefly. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you learn from people you're around, and, and, and you take some from everybody. But, you know, the best thing he did is he had the ability to get his players to believe they were a lot better than they really were, so that when they took the field, uh, they thought they could beat everybody. And uh, everybody has their different method and way of doing that. Uh, he talked extremely positive to his players and made them. Uh, believe they can conquer the world, and because of that, he had great results. So that's the one thing I try to carry over from him. Uh, he's a great man. He loves the game of football. He has a great deal of respect for uh, the game and, and what it represents, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to see him. Anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you, yes.